So hello everyone, for is it, who, who's attending right now. Um, I wanna thank you all for joining us. There, there's quite a bit we wanna to talk today. So today is all about uh, multiple chemical hypersensitivity, uh, environmental toxins, and many and everything in between. And, and really to have a discussion on, on what we can do to protect ourselves, to prevent everything as much as we can, and hopefully to shed some light on this disorder, this group of disorders. So I'm Dr. Glenn Harrison. My, my clinic is, um, we, we focus on chronic and autoimmune disorders. Uh, that is our focus. We use natural strategies with it. The, the clinic is, uh, the name of the clinic is the Center of Functional Medicine. We're in Westminster, Colorado. And, um, and, and ultimately our, the blend of tools that we use is advanced laboratory science, diagnostic testing, and natural medicine. So that's, that's, that's what I do. Um, we have a few other guests here I'd like to uh, introduce briefly. First, we'll start out with Annette. Annette is the founder and the owner of InSpirit, who focusing on, and thanks for joining us, Annette, focusing on uh, healthy, high-performing, uh, you know, and uh, sustainable. And did I get that right? Interior design. Got it right. <laughs> so, Annette, briefly, give us a little bit, if you can elaborate a little bit on what you do um, in, 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 in what you work with. Wonderful. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, it's great to be here. Uh, so I'm an interior designer by training, but my specialty is working with folks who have chemical sensitivities, um, and that's really helping them to create as healthy an interior as we possibly can. Um, in today's world, we have definitely more options than we did even 10 years ago, thanks to various different third-party certifications for both products, as well as for buildings, and just everything sort of driving the marketplace. What I do is help with all the interior finishes. So basically from the interior house wrap all the way in, floors, walls, ceilings, cabinets, counters, et cetera. And then I can also help with interior furnishings as well. All right, well, thank you again for joining us. And Janine, Janine Humphrey, um, owner and founder, uh, family owned business with IAQ Professionals, focusing on indoor air quality and radon mitigation. Is that, am I right with all of that? I don't want to butcher it. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I focus on helping to keep your air safe in your home and know that there's not chemicals that could make you sick or harm you. Um, I do radon mold asbestos VOC testing, which is your volatile organic compounds, formaldehyde, um, really any kind of testing to determine what's going on in your home. All right. Thanks. Thank you for joining us. And last but not least, but the star of the show is Kim Glover. <laughs> Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Most importantly, the, the, the puppies. The puppies. So um, I'm a mom and a wife and I, um, my kids are older. So we just have one that lives with us now. He's 20. So I'm a breeder of Australian Labradoodle puppies. And it's the best breed I've ever found. We love them. And uh, we have a blast with them. So it's oodles of fluffy doodles is my is my uh, business and uh, I keep I, I keep myself busy with it. It's uh it's very fun, very rewarding and uh, uh, yeah, just just super fun. Meet lots of new people through it. I believe it. I believe it. I got a chance to see some of the pictures of, of some of the puppies. And, and when you get pictures like that in your email, it just changes your whole day. And that's just a picture. <laughs> so so that, true. That's truly amazing. So again, thanks everybody for coming. Um, we have we have a few different people of different professions here, uh, but all kind of working to the same the same outcome, the same goal, uh, just from different approaches. And and Kim, you uh, thanks for joining us because I know you're going to share some of your story, and I know it's not that easy. Um, but you've been in the trenches. So again, as I as I was saying when we first started. Um, Annette and myself and, and Janine, we can, you know, we can talk in, in over and over and over of what we see, but when you're really in the trenches and you're experiencing it firsthand, uh, you're fighting through it, that, that's, that's very, very important um, for people to see that and to know, you know, there is another side to it. There, there is a way to get through it. So I know we all have limited time. Um, so would you be, be willing to start off, Kim, and, and just tell us a little bit about the journey? And it doesn't matter if we go back 20 years or even 30 years, because I think it's important for people to know the extent of the journey. Yeah, sure. So um, uh, a year ago yesterday, actually, 
I had the first um, allergic reaction. Um, I had had two litters, had run myself into the ground, was not sleeping well, was not eating well, which is not like me at all. <clears throat> I was actually eating packaged sausage, <laughs> which I would never ever do. And uh, just ran myself in the ground with the two litters. We had just moved here, I had no help. And um, I'm very hands-on with my puppies. So I was like 20 hours a day. And then, um, then we took seven of them, we drove them to Kansas City where we had just moved from. And then we rehomed one of the moms because she was retired and I had four dogs and it was just too much. I couldn't give them what they needed. And rehoming Savannah was extraordinarily traumatic for, for both of us. We loved her with all our heart. We got her when she was two and she had been abused and we had, we had just brought her back to life and she was just this beautiful creature, but we had to do it. Um, and so that what Dr. Harrison then later explained, like that emotional strain was like the tipping point for me. And then I got sick. We were home. I was ignoring that I was sick, decorating for Christmas and started to get a fever. And then I got a week later, I had, I knew I had a really bad ear infection. Um, just drank some Pedialyte one night and ate a, a whey protein bar and bam, just hit me with this allergic reaction. And I had had it once before, um, probably a year and a half before that, again, having just gone through a very emotional uh, situation with a family member. And, but it only lasted a few days, but I was allergic to everything. You know, we were in the ER and, you know, increases your heart rate, hive swelling, all that stuff. So I kind of knew what this, I had experienced it before. So I could control with Benadryl, went to the doctor the next day and he gave me an antibiotic for the ear infection. And that just, that was it. Then I was at the ER five times in four days. Um, and they would give me steroids that they would say that nothing will get through this. You're not going to get an allergic reaction. And I would be back 24 hours later with, um, they weren't anaphylactic um, in nature, although they feel like they are. Um, and they say to you, it shouldn't close your throat, but it could. <laughs> um, so, in, and you go in the ER and um, everything you see on TV about like the doctors that care and they roll up their sleeves and they're, they're in it with you is a lie. <laughs> like yeah. I, I, was, I just remember looking at them and like, Grey's Anatomy doctors are so much better than you. And <laughs> they just didn't care. Um, you know, they were going home. And this was when, co so they were convinced I'd had COVID. And so we did the testing and then the test came back negative and they said, well, we don't trust the results anyway. <laughs> so um, I, I looked at one of the ER doctors, like the third trip in and he said, why is this happening to me? Cause like I, it would be terrible. And then I would have panic attacks because you couldn't breathe, your mouth was constricting, but it really wasn't. And they said, that's a real thing. It feels like it is, but it's not. Um, and he looked at me and he said, my job's not to figure out uh, what, why it's happening. My job's to keep you from dropping dead in front of me. And he turned on left the room. <laughs> so not a lot of compassion, not a lot of help. Got an allergist to see us and he just he was not team Kim. He was, once he figured out that it wasn't anaphylactic in nature, he was off. He was done. He didn't tell me it wasn't anaphylactic. He didn't tell us anything. So I keep calling the office, trying to get the results of the tests that I've done. It was a nightmare. And he just, he just ghosted me. <laughs> it's like awesome. So then found another allergist. And of course they're saying it'll be 30 days before you can get in. At this point I'm on mass steroids just to keep my face. I had probably a thousand hives, um, bright red, burnt, my skin would burn. If I stepped on our carpeting, it was like your feet were on fire. Um, I called the couch my island because like that was where I was safe and like nothing could touch the ground um, because I would react. And um, my three dogs, I'm not allergic to them, but they were, they were out in the dirt and the pine. Pine really was bothering me. We had pine needles everywhere. So I couldn't even have them down with me. Um, there, there were just no answers. So I'm on these steroids and then they're saying, well, we're gonna, you know, your steroids are gonna run out. Um, and finally got to this allergist and she said, Kim, she explained that it's not anaphylactic in nature, that it was this cytokine storm and um, we've got to get you off the steroids. And, and of course I'm panicking when she says that because the steroids are what kept my face from being like this big, you know? So, um, 
went through a process of weaning off of them because there is a point where the steroids actually cause more of the redness and the, the itching and inflammation. So was able to wean off of those in a couple of weeks time, but I was miserable. I couldn't go anywhere. I, I, so I haven't been able to live above our basement since then. Our main floor in our upstairs, I can't go into. Um, uh, I can go there now, but I can't, I can't sleep there. I can't stay up there. Like in our living room, we have a couch that we had just bought. I can't sit on the couch. I can go on that carpeting now, um, but you know, it's, I, I, that's it, you know, I'm in and then I'm out. <clears throat> and the very upstairs was the worst. Um, and Janine had gone through, and there was a piece of furniture in there actually that was very toxic. So um, we ultimately know from Janine and Annette helping me, they were lifesavers for me, that we have to replace all the carpeting and the flooring in this home. Um, but I'm not to the point, I was ready to do it. I have a two month break right now. And Dr. Harrison was just said, Kim, you know, your, your body's not ready to do that kind of stir all that up, even though we'd be bringing in basically like hazmat teams to, you know, to uh, mark off the rooms and um, get everything out. And it's not like I can go stay at a hotel. Um, so I have air purifiers on every floor, air doctors that are, I couldn't live here without them if I didn't have those. Um, and you know, we, we just have to wait. So you just wait. So it's been a year. Um, in the beginning, I was incredibly sick. I was incredibly weak. I've never been that weak in my life. I am a doer. I am a, I, 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 I do a lot. <laughs> I love my work. It's a blast. Dr. Harrison has taught me so much about you've got to slow down and gave me a lot of tools that actually allowed my body to start to heal. So I've had to just take a pill and chill and that's hard to do. Um, but like, I couldn't go to stores. Um, I couldn't go to the grocery store. I could, I, I couldn't go anywhere because uh, my sense of smell was so heightened. We finally got to where I was doing walks and I could tell you what homes were doing laundry with, fabric softener. I, I, I could smell it so far away. And I, I would look at my husband, you don't smell that. It was so potent to me. Um, so it's just been this balance of working with Dr. Harrison to challenge my body appropriately. But yet, if you just are challenging all the time, you're just creating more histamine. You're just, your body is always up here and you don't know, am I truly reacting to that? Or am I just in this state of crazy? Um, so in this whole year period, for the first probably six months, I had to wash my clothes with just water. Um, I was able to start using Norwex laundry detergent. At that point I could do one squirt and I had to like triple rinse my clothes. And that, now I can do as many squirts of Norwex and it's completely non-toxic, but your body still just does its thing. So now at least I can do laundry. Um, and I can, I use Bonner soap on my hair. I, that took me probably five months to be able to use. I, at first I just had to wash my hair with water and uh, a Norwex microfiber cloth, just pulling the grease out of my hair. And you all need to know, like, I love my makeup. I love my hairspray. I am, I like, I haven't had makeup for a year <laughs> or hairspray. <laughs> <laughs> and I have survived idols die and fall to the ground, but they will be resurrected when they can be. <laughs> um, so it's just been this, this patient journey of um, ju you just have to let your body do its thing. And you, you know, you can't make it. And that for people that are doers and entrepreneurial types, we don't take that very well. <laughs> <laughs> like I'll make it happen. Whatever needs to happen, I'll find a way. And you, you literally can't. And you, it, it would sap my energy so much that like you have this little tiny piece of pie worth of energy in a day. And how are you going to spend that? Are you going to walk upstairs and make one of the three foods you can eat? Well, that's a fourth of your energy allotment for the day. You know, are you going to wash your clothes? That's half your energy allotment for the day. Um, so it's, it's uh, definitely been a journey of um, patience and just taking a pill. <laughs> yeah, no, no I, I completely 
I completely understand that. And I think both Janine and Annette have seen that with you. Um, and I've told you that many a times that the patience is key, but not too many people have that level that you do. Um, but hopefully some reassurance, you know, that they can say, yeah, this is, this is one of the tools, one of the keys that are needed. Um, I, you know, it's, you're kind of reminding me of all the story that you, you shared with me a while back and, it, and, and, and I appreciate it. And I appreciate your willingness to, to, to speak about it. Um, but I was thinking about b- before the energy started to turn a corner, right? And then, then there were energy and ability to walk, go for walks and things like that. And I never realized that, that, that just existing, uh, living in the basement and you know, more difficult and more labor intense ways of washing clothes and uh, looking over your shoulder, all that, that, that requires a lot of energy all by itself. It must have been quite difficult when you didn't have the energy. And just to exist, you needed to exert yeah. more energy. Very much so. It's been, um, yeah, so the, the first three months, it was terrifying. I didn't know what was happening. Um, I was so weak. I was so sick. I would just cry. And I couldn't be with my dogs, which, they're, you know, they're, I love them to pieces. My husband couldn't come down because he would, you know, he wouldn't think about it. He would just, he would, you know, use a hair gel. Or, you know, God forbid, put on a deodorant that day. And you just like, I mean, that was it. That would, that would set me back two weeks. Um, so I would just sit here alone and just, just cry. I mean, there were points like I just, I just, I didn't want to wake up and I am not a depressed person ever. Like that's just not my MO. There's always joy, no matter how bad it is, it can always get better or it could, all, I mean, it could always be worse and a million people would kill for your situation. But I, I was just, I would beg God to like, just take me. What was your, what was your, sort of interrupting, but what, what do you believe was kind of some of the keys to keep you pushing? Someone's in that, in that place. Yeah. What would you tell them? What, what, what would you tell them now that you, you, you've made a lot of distance? You're, you're still, you're still, in, you're still battling. You're still fighting. You're still pushing. What would you tell them when they're in that dark spot and they can't see any light? They, they, maybe they don't, they don't know of anybody that has made it yeah. through. It is going to get better. You, you have no ability to see that. You don't even have an ability at that point to even fantasize about it getting better or visualize it, but it will. And um, the, thing, the things that help me the most, because honestly, there are very few people that can hang with you through that because they don't know what to say. They can't do anything and it makes them extraordinarily uncomfortable. And so like your best friends, your, your, your pastors, all, like they just, they don't know how to do that. Um, even your spouses, your kids, they just, you kind of become the elephant woman and everybody just wants to stay away from you. Um, and so honestly, for me, um, there was a scripture that helped me tremendously. It says, um, don't worry about tomorrow, uh, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is, is the trouble you have now. And don't go borrowing trouble from tomorrow because you don't have the grace for that. And so there were times in that where I would have to live sometimes by the 15 minute block, you know, because there, when I was going through this, my throat would randomly start to swell and you didn't know if it was going to go closed or not. So you've got your EpiPens, you've got your inhaler, you've got, I mean, I've been on Benadryl uh, 24 seven for a year. You know, you've got all that ready to go and you're exhausted. You just want to go to sleep and you're terrified because your throat may close when you're asleep. And what if you don't wake up? So, you know, my son coming down I could call him at two in the morning to say, we please come sit with me. Um, it, you, you have, you honestly, in that, that frame, you have to dial into what's most important to you. And to me, for me, it was my son and my dogs, (laughs) you know, and, um, and my dogs, like I could, I could, I could have checked out without them. Like I, I was to that point, but my son, I couldn't, and I, I couldn't. So I lived for him. Um, and I'm not a quitter. Um, and I, and I don't allow myself the woe is me space very long. I mean, it's legit and you have to feel it and you have to climb in it and you have to cry like a lot, <laughs> a lot. But, um, I don't know for me, my faith was a huge part of it. And if I didn't have that, I don't, I don't know how I would have made it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you talked about the support system, right? Your son, having some family, 
even if yeah. you're not even able to interact with them, they're there. Yeah. Right? That, that makes you, even if they don't know how to communicate with you, I think in my line of work, I'm always trying to fix. And then yeah. I have to remember that and I think men in general are fixers and, uh, and they have to realize that sometimes you just can't fix. You just have to be. And, yep. uh, and that's a hard thing to do. That's a hard thing to do. Um, it is. And to just climb into it with somebody and support them where they're at and say, I have no answers, but I'm here with you. And yeah. it's very rare to find friends that can do that. My dad and my stepmom were precious and they would call me every day and they would do that. I got a few lectures, but for the most part, they could just, you know, be in that place with me and uh, just say, I, we're so sorry. I've also learned that chronic illness isolates people from their, you know, inabilities, right? Inability to socialize, et cetera, interact. But, but it also, um, it, it changes things. And sometimes we lose some of our, our, our family, our herd, if you will, friends, acquaintances. Did you experience some of that through this year? I did. My two dearest friends, they just, they couldn't, they couldn't do it. Yeah. And they like my, my best friend, we've been best friends for 12 years. I talked to her twice in like the first six months. And you know, they just didn't, they don't have the capacity and another, and, and it, it, you know, we're, we're not close anymore. And then one of my other dear friends, I was able to say to her, listen, I need you to just be there with me. Like, you know, I, I know you don't have the answers. I, you can't have them. And she apologized. She's like, I'm so sorry. It's just so hard. On, and it is, it's, it was terrible on my husband. Terrible. Um, but yeah. So, you know, that, so, so that's, that's, kind of the year. And that's interesting that it's, it's, when did you say it would be a, an exact year since the first? Yesterday. Oh my goodness. That's yeah. not, I, didn't, I didn't time this for that. Wow. <laughs> well, maybe this is a good thing. This is a milestone. We're moving forward, yes. right? Yes. We're just, just a check in. Um, yes. So uh, where, w- briefly, where are you at now versus when, when things were really, really dark, where are you at now uh, shedding some light on what can be achieved or what, you know, what, what is possible? Where am I at mentally? Your life changed, I guess. Oh, I mean, I'm running my business. Um, you know, it's, it's very demanding and I'm doing very well with it. Um, I, but Dr. Harrison taught me some tools and I have to follow those tools. And that is, I, I don't get to work till nine o'clock, even though I love it and it's a blast. I have to shut down. And that is so hard for me because that is fun. Uh, it is so much fun. Like who doesn't want to play with puppies all day long? Um, and um, guarding my sleep. Um, just And the, one of the biggest lessons for me was the emotional toll that life has on us and the stressors and strainers. So I, like, like anger, when the doctors were just like not taking care of me, that's an emotion I couldn't afford. I could not afford that, that tax on my body. And so, um, you just get really good at just saying, you know what, I I just set that aside. And I, and I, I, and there's a difference between burying things and you're still stewing and you're bitter and it's still consuming your energy. You literally just get the ability to set it aside. So now like I go, I go in stores all the time. I'm much less reactive and people are using a lot less cleaners now too from COVID. But like, I remember I was, I, I make a blanket for every puppy family. So I was at the fabric store probably six months in and I had to wear a mask just to keep the chemical smell out. And the, I'm watching them spray the counter with toxic chemicals after every single client. I'm like, the person's not even touching it. And they've got these glass things up, of course, you know, and everything. And I just, I walked up and she went to grab her bottle. I said, I need you to stop. If you spray that, we're going to have to take, have let me go out in an ambulance to go to the ER. And she looked at me and I'm like, it's toxic. I need you to just not spray it. And so my face is breaking out in hives and I'm all over the place. My face, I can feel it swelling, but I got my blankets and I left where I was there the other day. And now they're not spraying toxins all the time, but I'm fine. Like I, I was able to go into Hobby Lobby a month ago where two months ago I couldn't, there's so many smells in there. I just couldn't do it. And like Shields had just opened here, best adult playground in the world. And my husband and I went in six weeks after they were open. I thought surely everything's off gas by now. Oh, within, I mean, 30 seconds. I was like, we, 
now. I have to leave now. Um, but now I can go in those places and I'm, and I'm okay. I'm a little red today. My, my son ended up being in the hospital last week for, th for three days and they were cleaning his floor every day with these chemicals, but I didn't have to leave the room. I just opened the door. I did wear a mask during that. And so now I get a little red for a couple of weeks, whatever, I'll be fine. You know? So it's, uh, I basically live my life. I don't go to church, which that's hard for me, but everybody wears perfume for church and the hair products are a big thing for me. Launch scented laundry detergents, fabric softeners, gel, hair gels. Those are the biggest and shampoos, scented shampoos. Mm -hmm. So I just don't, don't do those things, but, um, but I, I do everything I want to do for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, um, that's a quite, quite a change. And, and then I guess in addition to that, now that there's hope and you're able to see these steps in the progression and the, the momentum, it, it, it's, it's much easier and lighter on the heart to push forward. Oh, for sure. And you were a huge part of that too, Dr. Harrison, because you understood and you understood that I couldn't push too hard. We've worked with functional medicine doctors for years and they would always push harder than our bodies could take. And then they would treat you like, you know, what's the matter with you? Because you couldn't, you couldn't do that. Um, and you never did that. And you had patience for me to be where I was at. And that's, I guess, just the biggest thing I would say to people is you have to have people in your life that, that are like that. And you have to be like that with yourself because you can't get into self-hatred or into poor me. Cause that does no, that does nobody any good. Um, you know, it always could be worse. It always could be worse. I remember Dr. Harrison telling me about clients that lived isolated for 20 years, you know, and, and I was just so thankful that I had these air doctor air purifiers and I could go up to the main floor for a half hour. Um, and I could go outside in the backyard and play with my dogs. And um, yeah, so it, it, it's so important that ment mental space on it is such a huge part. It, it truly is. It truly is. And it's, and I think our mental capacity is based off our experiences in life. The people we're around our, 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 our pursuit of our goals, having goals and, and having the ability to have goals like you. And I, when I found out that, okay, you're in your basement, but you have a lot of things that drive you. Well, oh my goodness, we can work with this. And then I realized pretty quickly, it's like, Oh, oh we got to pull the reins back on her. Cause she's going to run too hard. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> so we learned that pretty quickly, but it took time, right? It took a, it took a whole bunch of time to figure that out and, and to navigate and, and to get you back on the ground before we could even have the opportunity to start building back up. And um, I remember when you were able to interact with your dogs a little bit more, and then when you were able to be outside and, and there were only certain times or durations you could be outside, and yeah. then that expanded and expanded. And I think the moral of the story is uh, doing everything you can to find out all the dysfunction and every dysfunction in your body. And then, yes. and then slowly and gradually, very gradually, as painfully as it is um, to, to expand on it when your body's ready. Yeah. And now like I, uh, there are many days I walk five miles a day with my dogs and we power walk and um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very active. Um, and some, like when I, when I would be exposed to things, it would, it just, I mean, sap all of your energy, like done. Like I would just have to go lie down, take a nap. And so like that doesn't even happen anymore. Um, and, and there was a history with me too, where uh, my high school was, was condemned for black mold. And Dr. Harrison worked, he actually contacted one of the top immunologists in the world on my case several times. And because nothing was making sense. And we believe that that's what started it. But so like it was the whole building was taken over by black mold. So I think that's the core issue that we're very slowly working at. And there's still a lot of work to be done. Like I can't take many supplements at all. I'm up to now. I uh, Vitamin D was the first thing we started with because my I was at a 20 was my level. And I think Dr. Harrison wanted me to be like around an 80. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh so I would be outside in the sun every day, but I could do one drop of vitamin D a day. And it took me a while till I didn't react to that. Well, now I'm up to six drops a day. And wow, so, this is new news to me. <laughs> I know. But the other thing is there are so many things like, like I eat three foods. That's all I've eaten for a year. But you have to pick what you're going to challenge your body on. So for me, I like for my, I had to 
get back into my business. I love it. It brings so much joy to me and I get to bring so much joy to other people. So that was one that I was like, I'm going to press myself wisely and slowly. Like I had another person raise a litter for me last spring and talk to Dr. Harrison about that. And he said, we need to put that aside, Kim, but if you have them do it, I'm okay with it. And, um, um, and then I've done two litters since then. It was great, but just being able to uh, like take the vitamin D do my business, sleep well, and then take charcoal twice a day to detox like that. That's where I'm at supplement wise. There's so many we want to add, but I just, you just slow your roll and be patient. Yep. Cause if you keep, if you press your body too hard, it is going to come back and bite you. You just can't. Hey, hey Kim, there was a question. If you could confirm for us, did you say you could only eat three different foods the yeah. last year? It's a, I can eat organic Granny Smith apples. Um, I can eat like ground beef or steak. Um, and then I can do, uh, um, and I have to do it in a pot roast. And there's one potato I could eat if it's cooked in the crock pot with the pot roast. There was like, I tried it in the oven. There was something molecularly different, but there is no butter on that potato. Just so y'all know. <laughs> so we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. Uh, but what if, and I will. Mm -hmm. But you can, I can tell, cause like if I go in the grocery store and I'll pick up the bananas, I instantly can tell if I, if I'm going to react or like I tried sweet potatoes again last week and I could tell I'm not ready for them. So you just put them down. Like, I don't even have to eat the food. I can touch it. And I have tells on my, in my mouth and in my, I get a high by my lip and then I just know we're putting it down. And yeah. And, and, you know, kind of modern day science, modern, we'll just say conventional medicine, current conventional medicine doesn't recognize uh, how sensitive people can be with regards to something that's non-anaphylactic. And as a result of it, it just gets dismissed. And, you know, people are, you know, uh, ostracized or, you know, it's all psychological. And, and more and more now we're seeing that, that there is a, a, an understanding of bizarre symptoms of picking up something and actually knowing it or having it against your skin and feeling something. Yeah. Um, we're, we're learning more and more about this and it takes a whole lot of courage, confidence to be able to stare, stare down that, that criticism that, you know, whether it's direct or indirect um, professionals, non-professionals and say, yeah, no, this, my body is telling me I do feel this way. It's not lying because I can imagine for you, it, and you know, you have a long history and a lot of strength, but it probably tests your strength in that to, to not let yourself fall and question yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, there was some of that because mm -hmm. you just had no answers. There was no, okay, I can look forward to this. There was nothing. Am I ever going to be able to do my business again? Am I, am I ever going to be able to come out of the basement? Like, am I ever going to be able to walk from the, from the couch to the bathroom and not need a nap? Like I, you just didn't know, but I'm not, I don't know. I just don't give myself that, that luxury of self-pity. Cause it really, it's a bad, oh, bad way to go. It's just, it, there's nothing good that comes out of that. Cry it out, get it out, you know, say what you got to say, just you and the walls. And then as my, as my parents would say, put on your big girl panties and let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things, Kim, that I think that you said is so important is listening to your body and knowing when you touch a piece of fruit, or a vegetable or walking into a store, don't deny that, you know, yeah. just immediately listening to that is huge. And um, I think that's something we all can learn on so many different levels. And, and with that, Annette, with your clients and want to kind of bring into the conversation of what you do and, you know, what, what you've seen in Kim's case, um, have you seen that with clients before where they're around certain building materials uh, and you're nodding your head like <laughs> every day? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and actually Kim hit on it. One of the worst offenders is furniture. Um, so whether that's upholstery, because when you think about upholstery, there are, if you start to take a part of sofa and you took like a, a chainsaw and cut it down the middle and started counting all the components in upholstery, there are at least at minimum 12. And of those, many of them are toxic. One of them being polyurethane is the worst. But um, in addition to that, it's the fabric, you know? And so Kim, I'm guessing your sofa is leather and that's yep. probably why you're okay on it because yep. more than likely it, it has probably off-gassed if it has been tanned with 
any, you know, aniline dyes that has since off gassed. But nowadays you can get leathers that are um, vegetable dyed again, you know, like our ancestors used to do. Um, and so making sure that the fabrics that you're sitting on, the clothes that you're putting on them, I mean, you hit all of it, the perfume, the beauty products, um, all of those things that touch our skin are really what affect um, my clients in the past the most. So for example, the carpet, the floor, the drywall, the drywall mud, the texture, you know, it, Texture in our drywall in our homes is, is it's ubiquitous and it's one of the most toxic elements in a home is actually just that little bit of texture, the orange peel that goes over the drywall to hide, you know, the taping and the seam. So when you think about your home, you really want to think about what are the, the biggest areas and how can I have the biggest planes, the floors, the walls, the ceilings be as healthy as possible. And then from there, you know, a lot of people worry about, for example, I um, mean, like cabinets, you do want to make sure the cabinets aren't, you know, filled with a lot of uh, fillers. But um, today, you know, there's so much more that is being done because of what's happening in California. So California really drives the market. And so you're looking for products that are, for example, carb compliant and they're compliant, meaning there's no formaldehyde in them. And we haven't had formaldehyde in many, many, many products for years now because of what California is doing. So if, if you're out, for example, just looking, if you walk into Hobby Lobby, um, you know, perfect example, and you turn over, let's say a picture frame, on that picture frame, there will be a label that says um, either a California Prop 65 warning, meaning it contains elements that cause cancer, um, or it will say California Prop 65 compliant, meaning it's good. So that's just something we can all do really simply. Um, so those are just a, a few of the examples. And I think of the, uh, ironically, the other big client that I had that um, had severe chemical sensitivities, as did her children. Um, we really looked at those big planes when they were building the home down in Castle, Castle Rock and then all the upholstery items and all the case goods. And ironically, we were working with a company out of California, phenomenal upholstery company. The fabric that they had been using, the thread we ended up finding out 10 years later had traces of lead in it because it was menu. And it was a, it's, it's called Trapunta where essentially it's, it's two layers of fabric that are almost quilted together. And that little bit of thread has a trace amounts of lead in it. So you, Goodness. Yeah, yeah. I'm, glad, I'm <laughs> so, glad we have the investigator here on this. Good, <laughs> and I and I love doing those investigations, as as Kim knows. It's like I I literally I hate to use this word, but I get off on it. It's like I want to know, <laughs> I want to dig as deeply as possible. <laughs> So that's something interesting that you said, Annette. I never thought of it. It's it's maybe kind of like when I'm working with a client, whether they have 16 different things going on, there has to be a hierarchy of implementation of uh, yeah. of investment of explore uh, kind of uh, exploration. So where yes. where would you say if someone someone's listening to this, they're worried about their home? What would be if there is a hierarchy, the the, the top three directions to investigate or to evaluate or to change? Carpet upholstery and what you're putting on your body, clothes, toiletries, all of those. Those are, those are the things that we're most exposed to. And okay. Kim hit on all of them as she was talking. Wow. Okay. Well, that's, that's exciting. So, so how did, um, uh, Kim, how did, how did Annette play part of the role in, into the, into the story of, of, of your journey and, and what you guys did to be together? She was, fascinating for I would love to just have lunch with her for four hours and just say go and just listen to her she's she's hilarious but she's also fascinating and um she was phenomenal like we just broke it down by different things and like I haven't been able to implement most of it I have a workshop here that's awesome and it's got oh I can't go in there it's got press press board in it, which I now know is very toxic um and then the bedroom down here that Janine for whatever we think the former owners had some weird chemicals that they stored in there. Um, so I just can't go in those rooms, but like she, so like, here's the paint to have that painted with to see before you tear everything out. It, um, and then, and I honestly, I just haven't exposed myself to it yet because I had other things that I was doing, but now I was just having a chat with myself today saying we need to let's, let's try that now. Mm -hmm. Um, 
but like when you get a bed, Kim, these are the ones to consider. This is what you have to look for. And when we do replace all the flooring in the house, here's your options. Um, and, and this is what you need to know. And um, it, it was, it was, I mean, just, you sit there, you're just like, oh my gosh. And like all, I have the, the drywall that's super toxic in my house. She's like, we'll deal with that later. And um, you know, all that, and I had already gone on a huge journey of getting rid of all toxic cleaners. And like, I had learned all that stuff like eight, nine years ago, but you just don't even think like we had just bought new furniture upstairs and Janine's like, yeah, it's still off gassing. It's not bad. It's mostly done. Um, yeah, it, it, was, it just opened your eyes, like even replacing cabinets. Okay. What are you going to replace it with? Cause most of them have toxic stuff in them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's a big investment beyond, beyond imaginable and you want to go in the right direction especially when even when you're still when you're still going through the the minefield you know you're you're navigating your way through the minefield and and doing everything to prevent you know a progressive flare or a setback or, or what have you immune irritation um, yeah, i'm really glad you brought that up um dr harrison because one of the things that i highly recommend to my clients like him and other clients i've had in the past is that you test products before you purchase so I've had clients literally take it, it. This sounds funny, but literally we would get a sample of the window and they would sleep with it next to their bed because they were going to be replacing all their windows wow. or we would get samples of the flooring or the cat, whatever it is that you're looking to purchase, get a sample of that. Like you can get fabric samples from, you know, pretty much any of our retailers, our online retailers, you just have to ask. Um, and put them by your bedside and do a sleep test with them. Um, and that way you aren't making that big investment and then going, well, dang it, this isn't working for me wow. because you, you, you just don't know these manufacturers are not to a point yet where they can disclose, they, where they disclose every single thing that's in it. Um, it's a very high percentage, but if they have a proprietary formula in their safety data sheet, they don't have to disclose it. And I've had many conversations with the research and development departments of various manufacturers. And, and you know, they think I'm nuts. It's like, well, you know, are you going to sue me? I'm like, no, I have this client and we just need to understand what's in this. <gasps> wow. I, I did not know you could get samples and do this. Oh but yeah. That is, uh, that's huge to know for people exploring. Yes. Um, now, now Kim, when, I was, you know, worried about an other environmental gases and toxins and mold concerns. And, and we reached out to Janine and, and, and she started, sent her off on, a, on the trail hunt to, to look for all these things. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Um, what did that look like? And, and what was that? Um, what was that experience? It was amazing. Um, she came, first of all, she's awesome. She's just totally cool. Um, and that, I think you have to unmute Janine. Um, but, uh, so she came in with her equipment and we tested every single floor. Um, and she left these little badges everywhere and some stuff I could do that was less expensive. And she went around and tested for everything for mold for, I don't even know if she can tell you better, but like oh, these were, I'd never even heard of these words before, but it was interesting. My son went with her through, she had this little machine and it would read if something was toxic. And so there were a couple of places that were really key. My workshop, which I was in all the time. Um, and, and the person who owned my home before me was an actual um, astrophysicist. Um, and so what Janine, she's like, I don't even know where these compounds are coming from They're in this house. Um, so she was guessing that maybe they used them to clean the carpets upstairs. Cause this carpet down here is newer. It didn't bother me as much, mm -hmm. but at the upstairs two floors, it's older carpet it needed to be replaced when we moved in. But uh, so she, guess that maybe she cleaned those carpets with it and stuff like that. It was so insightful, but also like I knew my house is cleared of mold. So that's not the issue. That was a huge relief for me or like any, anything like that, like radon or all that kind of stuff. Like none of that was a concern. And then she gave me the list. She's like, when you, when you buy stuff, don't have this stuff in it. Wow. So, so there, there's, it takes a lot of people to try to figure some of this stuff out and the guidance and, and the, beyond family and the support structure. Um, yes. Tell us a little bit about Janine, what, what, what you found and, and, and how you navigated through it. What did that look like? And what um, do you see? What, what do you see when you see people uh, struggling like what Kim is and is improving every day? Uh, but what, what do you see out in, in your work? I see someone who is struggling to 
enjoy their home, which your home is your safe haven. And that's the one place you should feel secure in it. And I think, you know, when I first chatted with Kim, the thing that was most important was to really listen to her and to understand what she was experiencing, what she needed, because if I didn't do that, then I wouldn't have been able to come in and really look at the home and all of the areas to determine what is bothering you. What is this area, you know, stepping on the carpet, burning your feet? Um, you know, that carpet had been in there for a long time. And I think when a lot of people don't realize is when you have a company come in and clean your carpets, the majority of the time, you don't know what kind of chemical they're using. And a lot of those chemicals are not soaked back up and that moisture will stay there and it'll continue to absorb and continue to build. And those chemicals that are in there are not good for anyone. Um, I think there was a piece of furniture that was upstairs that my meter, as soon as I touched it, it just skyrocketed for VOCs, very high. And it was an older piece of furniture just to show, you know, that even if it's not a new piece of furniture, it can continue off gassing and releasing chemicals over years just because of how it's put together like a net set. Um, you know, there's ways for them to get around stuff, but really taking the time to go through her home, listen to her and make sure that I was giving her what she need to help her get some answers to begin the process for changing things in her life and her home to be able to live in it and to explore in it. It, it, it definitely is a, is a process of elimination, isn't it, Kim? <laughs> it is. It really is. And then with both of those, both of having these ladies involved was such a critical piece for me because now I know what I'm working with. Like my family members, they'll get frustrated. I can't believe you're still living in the basement. Like you need to buy a new house. Are you, are you crazy? Like, I don't know what's in though. I know what's here. I know what we have to deal with here. Um, yeah. So it, there was a huge piece, even just that peace of mind. Cause you start to think you're going insane. Like, you know, that piece of furniture was in the room that I was spending a lot of hours with. I would watch TV in there. So when I, when this triggered for me, so, you know, I wouldn't have known that. And I would have gone right back to that piece of furniture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell, if you can tell me a little, tell us a little bit about, you know, we, we definitely painted the picture of, of the challenges you went through the flares, the, you know, uh, the practically living in a bubble and everything being your immune enemy. But what about before that? You talked about intensity, loving your job, not shutting down. But how was your health and, and your, your, ex, your energy level and all of that? What was it before all of this? Before it happened, I, had, I have a genetic mutation, MTHFR, which affects how you detox and create energy. I only have one copy. So that I started to see the effects of that in my life. And I think that combined probably with the mold exposure from my high school, um, and in my high school, it was everywhere. It was the ceiling, the walls, the carpets, and the air ducts. They had put in a solar system in the, in the 80s, thinking they were really cool, and it leaked. And so they were poisoning all of us. Um, so I had a lot of gut issues once I hit my 20, really late 20s, 30s. Um, you know, had, to, had been gluten-free, uh, milk-free for probably eight years at the time that this happened, you know, had cleaned up everything as far as makeup and cleaning products and all that, had done all of that work, um, had worked with a functional medicine doctor, I had SIBO, I had um, uh, some, a lot of gut challenges and had worked and like gotten all that fixed and eradicated. Um, and she did a GI map test and she said, I've never seen someone's gut this healthy. Um, but it just wasn't maintaining. Like I was always fighting, like just energy wasn't, wasn't what it used to be. Um, but now I know it was this whole mold thing that was still following me through, you know, we have a sauna that I would go into the, the infrared sauna that we were doing three to five times a week. Um, you know, I ate clean, almost all organic. So like all of that was being done. Um, but I definitely didn't have the energy I had when I was, you know, in my twenties. <laughs> how, 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 how would you say your energy is now versus pre um, mass cell activation, if we want to call it that? Yeah. So pretty similar. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I would say pretty similar. The, 
like before when I would want to run a bunch of errands, that's when I would notice it. That would just, for whatever reason, that would make me tired and I would want to take a nap. So like now, if there are five places I want to go and run errands, I'll just listen to my body and maybe I can do all five and maybe I do three. And I just, and now I don't have to go home and take a nap, but I do have to make myself go lay on the couch and watch a Hallmark movie. You know, I, I, uh, <laughs> I can't, you know, I have to listen to my body or even just sit on the deck with the dogs and my husband and we just talk. Mm-hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. So, um, but that was, that's been that way. I had had a real bad bout of mono in 24, 2013. Um, and I had it for a year straight. Like I was so weak, couldn't, couldn't lift a book to read my mind. I couldn't watch a TV show. Um, so I had come out of that, but there was a real fatigue and I'd never been the same after that. Probably. Yeah. Okay. So I guess to summarize, um, Post mold, there were some challenges. You you navigated through that, and then you kind of found uh, a lot of balance. Um, so you were, you know, for I guess the people listening, you were you were doing really well. You're high performing. You're you're. I know Janine and Annette can can attest to this. You're kind of like in that 90th percentile. You know, you're extremely high performing. So what you feel I'm um, a little bit struggling. People have never even been able to do that before. So for to be down in the dumps and isolated on on one sofa cushion, uh, that that's a drastic change. That's a that's a drastic change from 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 where where you were before. Um, the I, I guess I don't want to necessarily summarize, but I want people to know that that something like multiple chemical hypersensitivity it can be uh, a slow building process where it tips. Yes. And, 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 and some people can be doing really, really good. Like I, I would say you were other than, you know, the, that, but in your case, all our workup and all our testing and everything we did uh, and everything we found, mold was a tipping point where you didn't completely pull to your true optimal. And you, you did a lot, mitigated a lot, but then life went on. The type A personality uh, came on and the passion for what you do. So passion can be a bad thing sometimes. <laughs> the yeah. Passion and moderation. And I do the same thing in my clinic. I've gone so far that I practically destroyed myself more than once. Uh, I learned, learned from our mistakes. But, but that, that happened and then maybe you weren't quite at 100% and that started to snowball. It didn't happen overnight. There was a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then it tipped. Absolutely. Because I had seasonal allergies. I was allergic to perfumes. Mm -hmm. But then as I would get older, there'd be more and more things, more foods that I couldn't eat. Um, But then like, uh, for example, like all of a sudden air fresheners really started bothering me. And the church I attended got these great toxic plugins to get rid of the bad smell of the carpet. And I couldn't go in the building. Um, So I had to leave the, literally had to leave the church. So um, looking back, you can definitely see the signs of places where my body just began failing me. But honestly, so much of it was my own fault because I would push myself way too hard and I would get into, then I, my body would just couldn't do it. It would just fold. And I think that's a, a very, very important point when you started out talking about your story, talking about the kind of the emotional connection of how the immune system can be tripped be aggravated and, and, a, and a tipping point or a, or a contrib- contributor to the immune irritation can be the result of something as simple as emotions and emotional stress and a lot of people don't realize this so when i'm working with all sorts of interesting and challenging and overwhelming cases when we are looking at multiple chemical hypersensitivity it's literally the immune system shell has broken and now we're vulnerable we're naked everything and anything is going to affect us. It's going to affect us extremely unfavorably. It's going to, it's going to be multiple systems in the body. Ultimately, energy is always going to decline because immune responses steal energy. So your immune system believes everything in its environment is killing it. And it's going to respond accordingly. And that's going to be extremely detrimental. Ultimately, your immune system doesn't only, isn't only preoccupied fighting everything in its environment, every chemical, every smell, every dust particle, every gas, every food, but, but, but it also makes you vulnerable. So multiple chemical hypersensitivity in, in, in mass cell activation, if we want to go into that world, it creates vulnerability because your immune systems are 
your immune system is completely preoccupied. So a lot of people develop some very, very, and you might, everybody in this panel here today might know about it, very, very serious infections while they're in the middle of fighting multiple chemical hypersensitivity. Okay. So I think that's important for people to know. And I think it's an, another thing, a very important thing is, is when we think of immune sensitivity, and I know in the world I'm in, everybody's like, oh, what food is my problem? Uh, it's, everything is food. No, it, that would be simple. It's not everything is food. Um, it, and it's not everything is, in, is environmental chemical. And not every, but, but if, you convert, if, you, if you look at the environmental component, you look at the, the, and that includes foods, all inputs, all chemicals, all environment, but you also uh, consider and, and recognize the spiritual and emotional component of immune irritation. You know, there's some, there's a chemical called interleukin six and it's an inflammatory cytokine and our, our, our body produces it in response to a stress. Could be a chemical, could be a food. It could be emotional irritation. Interleukin six, when they measure it, it's really interesting. When they measure it um, after a heated argument with a loved one, it'll be it'll spike for two to three days after one argument. And then interleukin six takes that long before it starts coming down. So that means from an emotional standpoint, you argue with the person you love, <laughs> that's who we argue with. Um, that is that interleukin six can climb that high and that directly affects the brain, turns on immune responses all over the body, exaggerated inflammatory responses. That's just one heated argument. Can we imagine if we're always under the gun, like so many people in North America, we're highly productive in, in, in the United States, most productive country in the world. Can you imagine how much, much, how many people are primed on the edge, ready to, to fall into this abyss of breaking your shell and being exposed or, or reacting to everything just from an emotional standpoint as the first stepping stone to getting there, not to mention all the terrible foods and, and the chemicals as, as, as Annette was talking about, or the, the, you know, the building products and all of this manufactured items or the gases that are coming off of them that Jeanette's going to find. We are priming our bodies to a higher and, and higher and, and higher inflamed state, immune, immune irritated state. And when it goes too far, it's a landslide on the other. And then you're down here and it's a, it's a very, you know, the definite, this could be your new nickname, patience or something like that. We're going to give that to you, Kim. But, but it takes a, a, and a lot of navigation too. It's not just patience. I'm just going to hold the line and you keep going, but navigating through it to build it up. A lot of, I think it's important for people to realize that immune irritation is not only, you know, something physical or that we can test. A lot of it is emotion. Yeah. That was huge for me. And you, you taught me so much in the beginning. I, it just, it blew my mind, the things that you were teaching me. That I never knew um, simple things like that. Um, but that was massive in my being able to start turning the corner was controlling that emotional state, not putting myself in those situations. You just can't afford that emotion. Um, and the discipline the for me that I, I never needed discipline to do something. I needed discipline not to do something. And that was so hard. Um, I have an empire in my mind at all times. I have hundred tabs open in my brain at all times, but you, you just can't do it. You have to just stop. And we think, but everybody else does, but there's a huge cost to that. There's a huge cost to your relationships and to your body and your mental health. Um, and we just don't recognize that in America because what, like the people that look the coolest are the ones that push the most. Right. And it's, it's, it's actually, it's, it's a, a fault in our, in our character that we can't just sit and chill. <laughs> That's true. That's true. They get in, uh, get tangled up in the cycle of, of, of productivity, the productivity cycle. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I just, think, uh, mm -hmm. did you have something to add? Did I interrupt? I just, you know, my, my pastor should say you're a human being, not a human doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and holding the line. So, so that, that's what we see with, with this, but once we're start, when someone's dealing with all of this stuff, it had, there has to be a starting point of building and building and building. And, um, I guess, Kim, where, where would you recommend someone who has been in the middle of this and have been through your journey? Where, where would be the first place you would recommend uh, them to navigate or to pursue? What would be some of the best tools that you think that they should seek out, whether it's mindset or, or what, what would you say? What would you tell them? 
I think there's there's several really important things. I think first of all, you need a, a, a someone to come alongside you that understands it, like Dr. Harrison to start with. He was phenomenal. I, we've worked with so many functional medicine doctors through the years, and he just he got it. And he didn't, he doesn't say, well, this is the mold. And if you don't fit in it, then something's wrong with you. And I've done everything I can do. He was like calling the, like one of the top uh, autoimmune doctors in the world to consult on my case. And he's like, I'm going to get the answers, Kim. So I highly recommend you start there. And then he's going to refer you to Annette and to Janine because all of that, I mean, it's so critical to have that. You have to have, um, a, a mental outlook of I'm going to survive and I'm going to go forward and I'm not going to have self-pity. Let yourself cry. I mean, I cried every day for probably three months. And I mean, like cry, you would just, that's all you do. You just sit there and cry. Um, and, uh, but, you, but you can't allow yourself to stay there. You just, you just can't. And you've got to get with someone or with people that can help you with that. Um, and then cleaning up your environment, like household cleaners, laundry detergents, fabric softeners, dryer sheets, they are so toxic, Windex. There's no law regulating what they put in your homes. It, like it, there's, what what is it? And that there's uh, 50,000 chemicals have been introduced. 80,000 80, chemi 80, plus chemicals have been, uh, have been filed and are on record, but only about a thousand have been tested. And of those thousand, um, only t about 10, 12 have been banned. And they're not even tested for what they do to people or animals no. or babies. No. Like the average umbilical cord has uh, like over 350 toxins in it. It's such like people, like we love plug-in air freshers. We think it smells good. It's clean. It's toxic. If you can smell that, that's phthalates and it's, it's destroying your hormonal system, which is destroying yeah. your health. And we think everybody does it. They're fine. No, they're not. Why do women get to where they can't lose weight? because they've got these toxins in their body. Why do we get tired? Why do we get these diseases? Like our bodies aren't supposed to do this. And we live in like the chemicals we put in our yard. I used to have the best yard in the subdivision. And then my dog died of cancer and seizures. And I, I, I started studying, like you just, it, our whole world is toxins. Yeah. We like, we like uh, hand soap that smells. Well, they, <clears throat> guess what? You've just put poisons in your body and you're sucking yeah. it. You wash your floors with Mr. Clean and you walk across it and it's in your bloodstream and in your dog's bloodstream and in your kid's bloodstream. It's just all the things to do and take one category at a time and tackle it and get it cleaned up and do what you have the grace for. If you're starting to freak out and it's too much, you got to pull back and say, what can I address right now? Because you, Rome wasn't built in a day and your body didn't get this way in a day. And you have to, you have to have grace for the race. It is a long race. And yeah. uh, that's not sexy to say, that's not fun. We don't like that, but it's true. There's not a pill you can take to make it better, but there are these things you can do. And I mean, when Dr. Harrison first saw me, I could barely have the energy to walk from the car to his office. I was so weak. And you, and then you made it to my office. You made it to my <laughs> office. I did. I Thank did. Kim. We have one more question. Um, yeah. So uh, Michael is asking, so do you have a meditation practice now? And then he adds, is the very definition of learning to chill. <laughs> That's hard. Uh, is, yeah. So I had always had that in place through my faith. Um, I, I do a lot of, uh, it's, uh, uh, it, it's, would be called meditation. But for me, I'm a Christian. So that's the place for me where I find that peace. And I had mastered that um, probably 10 years ago. I was on a pastoral staff at a great church and um, that we just like, yeah. So I know how to connect um, and how to disengage from what's going on around me that just makes you want to just like ball or worse. And uh get set at one again is what like the term is that mm -hmm. that level of peace it literally means to be set at one again and so i know how to do that and if i hadn't had that uh, yeah i don't know what i would have done because i couldn't even read books because they were off gassing i remember that yeah yeah it's um it, it's definitely a a component of focusing on one thing at a time and i like how you highlighted that 
and not getting, allowing us ourselves to get overwhelmed and, and doing everything we can on that one platform, that one direction, whatever it is, as small as it is. And, um, and just focusing on that till it's covered and then taking the next one and focusing on that. And, and if, if people, you know, people have may have heard of these chemicals and then they got to clean them out and they're working on them. Uh, if they're sharing a home, a living space with someone that's maybe thinks they're crazy, that's a whole nother difficult level, right? That, that, that is courage and confidence and, and, and you know, standing your ground on what you need. So it, it's definitely messy. It's definitely a messy, a messy uh, effort because it's not that a big part of the population are dealing with this yet. They will be, they will be. They will. Um, so it, it's a long journey. I always like to use the phrase that something like this, and I may have told you, Kim, this is the, it's the race of the turtle and the hare. The turtle always wins. <laughs> yes. yes, it's true. And, and also your loved ones, they need to get help for them too. And I remember Dr. Harrison saying, John can call me anytime he needs to, because they're going through something very traumatic as well. They can't help you. Uh, they have to give up their favorite deodorant. Like, you know, John would, he'd be like, she's fine. He'd put hair gel on and I, I would immediately, like my face would blow up and he'd feel terrible or, you know, put a, a air freshener in his car and, uh, you know, I'm done. I can't, you know, I can't ride in that car, but they, they have to have that support system too. Cause it's, it's really hard. It's really hard. It's true. It's true. It, it wears down the support staff, uh, the caregiver, if they will, it, it'll wear them down. And, and then there can be a conflict uh, between the yeah. loved ones, between the person who needs the help and the pe- person that is trying to help. So, and I, and I think any provider or any doctor has got to be part of that. It can't be just one direction. It can't be one and direction. And it's very hard to find that because mm-hmm. they don't have the tools and they don't have the answers and they maybe aren't willing to dive in and do it on the functional medicine side and the traditional medicine side. So if you're struggling with it, or if you know someone that is, I cannot recommend these three more highly. And like, they haven't asked me to say anything, but they, just, they, were, <laughs> they were there for me. And like, I could say, okay, Dr. Harrison, I want to do a litter. What do you think? And we could talk it through. And he would say, if you have these parameters in place, I'm okay with it, but not this. And, and I could say, I want, I want to rip my carpeting out. What do you think? Or I could say, Janine, what's the one thing I need to do in my home? You know, uh, it was huge, huge having their help. So I have a final, maybe it's a final question as we're wrapping up here for you, Kim, where you were, and I didn't know this was an anniversary. So bittersweet. I'm going to say it's sweet. It really it is. is. It's the first time I we all actually communicated together. <laughs> it's the first time we all communicated together. Oh, that was your year. Um, where, where do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself with, with health, energy, um, uh, ability, uh, with your, with your puppies? Where do you see yourself in another two years? Um, I see myself just continuing to get healthier all along. Like I'm not going to stop till I have everything the way I, I want it in my body and, um, can do more of the things that will continue to heal my body. Like I may be back to close to the energy I was before, but it's, you know, I want, I want all of that eradicated. So I'll keep doing that. And it's just that balance of, um, life and the, the business and, uh, slowing down when I need to hiring help is huge for me, um, to allow me to do that. So my body can rest because ultimately that's what allows you to get better is when your body can rest and it's not being triggered, then the histamine levels can come down and then you can get to where you can do things. Um, so that I just see this as a, I see this as a long-term thing. I mean, I think I'll be continuing to improve my health in 10 years, but even in this year, and I never would have believed you if you had said in a year, Kim, you'll be, you know, I'm going to have seven to eight litters this year. I would have never believed that was possible. Um, so just continuing the journey and continuing the things that I've learned, the guarding my sleep, the, uh, the, the, the quiet, the, all of those things, just those disciplines continuing and just uh, getting healthier and healthier. And, and that healthier, that the, the symptoms of feeling healthier are, are always, for, for those who are listening, they're always the, the indicator. Energy is a big thing. Energy is a, a, a detox tool, if you will, is an immune modulating tool. But this, is, this all comes down, I know, Kim, we talked about this. 
increasing immune tolerance of the shell that I'm saying that broke down and now we're naked and vulnerable to everything in our environment and even more so to emotions. Um, when the shell starts to rebuild, that's, that's kind of our, our immune and oral tolerance. So I know we talked about this, these three foods that we even had questions about um, that, that, and we've been talking about this for a few months or for a while, uh, how can we expand on our diversity of food? And I know you're like, of course I want this Dr. Harrison. And I'm like, okay. And we've challenged it. So I think another important thing is, is when you stick getting grounded first, knowing where your safe zone is, and then giving it enough time to, you know, stick your toes over the edge just a little bit on one specific parameter. It could be a food, it could be a supplement, it could be a, I don't know, st stepping upstairs for a, a period of time. I remember we were at 30 minutes and then we were 45 and then we got into our plus and so on and so forth. I think it's important to realize that that's part of the patience is this slow, very, very slow challenge when we're ready for it of one entity at a time. I know we were stuck on one drop of vitamin D forever. This is the first yeah. I heard five. So I'm very proud of you <laughs> to get there. I was excited. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's true. You do one at a time and you just can't, don't get frustrated. You, I mean, it's not going to do you any good. It's mm -hmm. actually just going to make you more unhealthy. So do what you can be grateful that you can do that and that you're not back where you were yesterday, you know, and, uh, Yes. And, and, and I know, again, I keep saying we're going to wrap up. So I, I guess we should wrap up. So you, I think I, I'm so grateful. We could have done this without you. Um, I, there's no way I would have been babbling about something that maybe people didn't want to hear about or <laughs> it would have went on and on and on. But, um, but I thank you for that and for being as open as you are with this. And, and really, Kim, you're the one who inspired this. You are the one who inspired. I'm steady looking for new ideas to, to try to, to elaborate and, and help people and teach them some things and, and show hope and, and strategy. And, um, you, you know, I was thinking about you and I, I ran it past Annette and then Janine and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, well, better ask the star of the show here. And you're like, oh, of course. So um, I know you thought maybe we'd be just talking about it together. <laughs> up till I now. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm very grateful for you being an amazing sport and, and actually inspiring all of us and for well, others. I'm so yeah, you're here. You're amazing, Kim. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I'm so grateful for you guys because it, it becomes a very narrow, lonely world when you're going through it and to have people that are on your side and don't think you're nuts. And uh, it's, it's huge. Yeah. So so in closing, if people, uh, anybody who's listening to this that are interested in learning more about Annette and what she does, um, what is, um, what would be some great contact information that someone wants to reach out to you, Annette? What, where would you, where would you recommend sending them? Um, you know, they can either email or um, just go right to my website. Um, that's probably the best place to start. So that's, um, I believe in the information that you had sent out, Dr. Harrison, but I'm happy to share it here. All you can chat it in. That'd okay. probably be the easiest way. Yeah. Yeah. That that's great. And, and what about you, Janine? What would be the best way if people are worried about what they're breathing in on a daily basis? Oh, oh. and okay. that can you unmute her. <laughs> well, what we'll do is we'll, we'll, I know all your information is also in the, in the email that was sent out. Um, we can, and that can put it in the chat or and if people can't, if people can't find any of this stuff, you can email me or reach out to me. I know the email that went out had all my contact information and that's www.drgharrison.com or you can just Google Dr. Harrison Center of Functional Medicine. Everything will be in there. And I'll, I'll, I'll put anybody who needs help or is looking for more information. Um, and, and Annette, I know I didn't talk about it, but you actually wrote textbooks on this topic. So <laughs> there's a massive mm -hmm. amount of knowledge there. <laughs> that that people can tap into so um yeah there's a lot there and should you be in the market for an mate i wish we had pictures of those puppies that you sent me kim oh my uh, god so <laughs> and maybe, oh look at that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so thank you again does anybody have anything to add or anything that i should hit on anything else that they want to contribute to add to this no? I don't think so. I think you hit it all. I'm so glad to see Kim doing so much better. I think she's come such a long way mm -hmm. and I can't wait for another check-in to see how much farther you come. 
Me too. Ditto. <laughs> yeah, you, well you said, Janine. You definitely have the fuel of grit and strength. And yes. Discipline and patience. And, um, and I, I, I believe your story will help others I when they so. are in the darkness. And, yeah, uh, I hope so. Because it's, it's a, yeah, it's a sad, hard place to be in and not make people <clears throat> understand it. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. There is. There is. Life yep. is a big, beautiful area. We just have to figure out how to navigate it, navigate through it with our health and, and our happiness. So anyway, yeah. well, thank you guys for joining. I really appreciate it coming from Canada. It's really cold outside, but I made it. <laughs> I made it today. You so. did. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll talk to everybody soon. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks so much. Bye, Take everyone. Bye. Bye.